Partial quotients method for long division is really nice because it makes sure that students can't really mess up. Um, in long division, if you accidentally don't put enough groups in, then you could end up messed up in your answer later on and really have to restart or at least restart part way from where you made your mistake. Um, and that requires students to understand what their mistake is in the first place, which is tricky, especially when they're learning a new algorithm. So this is a nice method because it allows them to kind of guess and check as they go um, and then add up their total at the end, which you'll see. So what we do is we look at the value of one digit at a time. So this two is in the hundreds place, which means it's really 200. So I think to myself, how many times do I think that five could go into 200? Um, and I wanna make a guess over here on the side. It doesn't have to be exact yet. It's totally fine if it's not, but we wanna get our best guess. Um, so I might first think, okay, what if I did five times 100? Well, that'd be 500, so that's gonna be way too much. So it's gotta be less than that. Um, so next I might think, what about five times 10? Well, that's only 50, so that's really not enough. But what if I did five times 20? Well, five times two is 10, so five times two, 20 would be 100. Um, that's not all the way there yet, but it's something. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. They might figure out that it should be five times 40, um, but if they don't, it, this is totally fine. I wanna show you this method so that you see that they can do again, partial quotients, they don't have to be the total. So five times 20 would be 100. We're gonna subtract that from our total. And now we have 134 left. So now I can think to myself, okay, how many times do I think five could go into 134? Well, I know five times 20 is 100 and that's pretty close. So I can do another 20, oops, which would be 100. And again, they might have figured out earlier on that this was 40 up here and not had to do these two steps. And that is totally fine as well. Um, they could have gone with the 10 that I mentioned and done four 10s, or they could have done a 10, a 10, and been like, well, hang on a second, I could have done a 20. Um, there's lots of different ways to do this. This is not the only way to solve this problem. So now we have 34 left. And then I can think, okay, how many times does five go into 34? Well, that's easier to skip count to. Five times seven would be 35, and that's just a little too big. So I'm gonna do five times six, which would be 30, and I would have four left over, and five does not fit into that, so that'd be my remainder. Next thing I do is I add up my partial quotients from the side. So I had 20, plus 20 is 40, plus six is 46. So my answer, would be 46 remainder four. Let's look at one more problem with that method. So again, I'm gonna look at my first digit and think of what's the value. So that nine is really 900 because it's in the hundreds place. So I'm gonna ask myself, how many times do I think that four might go into 900? Um, well, four times 100 would be 400. That's not all the way there, but it's a pretty big guess. So let's go ahead and do that. So I would do subtract 400 and I would end up with 560. And I know that 400 is less than this number so I can go ahead and do that guess again. And then I would have 160 left over. So now I can't do another four times 100 because 400 would be way more than what I have left. But I can think about what other facts I know. Um, so I might notice this has a 16 in it, and I know that four times four is 16, but there's an extra zero here. So what if I did four times 40? And that would equal 160. And in this case, I have no remainder. Then again, I would go over here on the side and I would add up my totals. So I have 100 plus 100 is 200, plus 40 is 240.